Hello and welcome to a short video about the LM723 voltage regulator actually in a circuit and powered up and some voltage readings taken particularly looking at the error correction circuitry and how that works. Um, video has been made in June 2019 just in case it's around uh, for a lot longer. Um, things that we need to know about the 723 and I've made a bit of a made a bit of a picture here. Um, be careful when you look at a circuit diagram because the way this is drawn with like pin 11, 12, 6, 5 down the left hand side and pin 13, 2, 3, 4 on the right hand side, that's entirely different to how the actual IC layout looks because you know if we've got the notch at the top we've normally got pins 1 down to 7 down one end and uh, pin 8 to pin 14 on the other side. So quite often it's drawn this way because um, by convention we like to put the voltage reference components on the left hand side and the output voltage divider on the right hand side. This is a series pass transistor used in this configuration. It's a power transistor, silicon 2N3055, very very common. Uh, the output terminal on the LM723 is uh, pin number 10 and that's driving the base current into the 2N3055 and this is the critter that does all the the hard work in this particular circuit diagram. The beauty with using the 723 is that it does a very low level of work. It hasn't got much current flowing through it at all. So it can usually be uh, employed with any number of output transistors um, to, to give any amount of current that we want from a very high current power supply. So it becomes therefore the heart of a high current precision regulated power supply. Now, I've got two voltage dividers happening here. I've got the voltage divider on the left hand side, 5K with a 470 ohm, I'll talk more about those shortly. On the right hand side, um, I've got 470 ohm, 390 ohms. Now, the right hand side sets the uh, high output voltage from this regulator. The left hand side is a it's a way of varying the voltage reference which is nominally 7.15 volts for a 723 ranges from about 6.9 to about 7.3 so the average is about 7.15 and by doing this I can take that voltage down to a much lower level and we find that this voltage that we've got going into the non-inverting input is actually used in conjunction with this right hand configuration, this voltage divider, to determine the final output voltage. Thing you have to know about the 723, you have to have a little bit of an appreciation of operational amplifiers, differential amplifiers, the op amp in here is operating differentially and therefore we're looking at the difference between the inverting input and the non-inverting input in the actual diagram for the LM723. So when this circuit is balanced it reaches an equilibrium I'll have ideally the inverting input and the non-inverting input being exactly the same voltages. Now before we go too far let's have a look at the maths First thing, if, if this resistor, the wiper, is right up at the very top, well, I can pretty well say I've got 5,470 ohms resting just from, you know, pin 6 and pin 5 therefore will be joined together. I'd have 5,470 ohms going down to ground. Ideally, then, the voltage coming out of pin 6 is going to be exactly what's on pin 5. That's 7.15 volts. That's providing that we haven't got too much um, input offset bias uh, which is coming down bias current and causing a voltage drop across there and altering it but with 5k more than 5k that shouldn't be a problem so let's have a look at that uh, first voltage I've actually got the meter at the moment already hooked up uh, to pin 4 and pin 4 is the inverting input pin 5 is the non-inverting let's take it over and 7.13 volts on the inverting input and if we take it over to the other side the non-inverting input oh I've actually got 7.15 volts why is there a small difference okay the small difference here arises because I don't have enough grunt coming into my 
board. I needed a little bit more voltage coming in. I've only got 17.6 volts coming in and you've got to remember that you're going to have a voltage drop across the 2N3055 and therefore I needed about 18 volts coming in based on the mathematics to get 15.8 volts out. So if we go and we look at the output voltage on the board I've only got 15.57 volts. Now if we go and we look at the maths on that, based on the fact that the wiper is at the top on the 5k resistor and I've got 7.15 volts, I have to say to myself, well I've got 17.15 volts there when the circuit's in balance, therefore that voltage is running a current down through the 390 ohm resistor, causing a voltage drop across the 390 ohm resistor. So 7.15 divided by 390, that gives me a current. And because we've got two resistors in series, Kirchhoff's current law says that the current through R1 is the same as the current through R2. So therefore I can multiply this current by the top resistor, 470 ohms. That's going to give me a voltage drop across that resistor. Now I already knew the voltage across that was 7.15 volts. So I can go ahead and add that 7.15 volts to that, giving me an output voltage of 15.76 volts. Why am I only getting 15.57? As I said, I've got a little bit low voltage. There's an inset that I'll put to this based on the BWD Minilab. Minilab's pushing out about 17 odd volts. I needed about 18 volts at the input, so I just didn't have quite enough voltage to uh, power the board for the highest output. Now this can be shown if I, if I drop the output voltage back down a little bit. I'm getting about 14.79 volts now at the output with 17 something volts going in, so we should be looking much better. Now looking at my inverting input, I've got 6.77 volts. And if I take that across to the non-inverting input, 6.77, 6.78 6 volts. We're in, well, if it was a phase lock loop and an oscillator, I'd say we're locked. Here it's a differential amplifier. We've reached equilibrium, we've got balance between the two inputs, 6.78. And maybe on a good day, oh, did you see it? It flashed up to 6.78, so uh, we're very, very close there. Uh, the circuit's actually quite well balanced. Now, if we go and we have a look at the mid position on this variable potentiometer, I pretty well got that showing here, my diagram. Um, in the mid position, we should have half of 5k, would be 2.5k, added to the 470 ohms, um, and then divided by <coughs> the uh, 5k plus 470 ohms. So 2970 divided by 5470 times the reference voltage, which is the internal reference voltage being uh, offered by the uh, special Zener diode, inside the 723 and that gives me 3.88 volts out so let's just adjust this properly to see if we can get the 3.88 volts i'll just run that down to uh, that halfway point there we are close enough 3.86 volts ideally what should we have over here we should have exactly the same 3.86 volts 3.86 volts smack on now the mathematics based on the mid position 3.88 divided by the 390 ohms to give me the the uh, current going through that multiply that current by the 470 ohms and then add it to the 3.88 volts that we know that we've got there and we should have 8.55 volts at the output all right let's have a quick look at the output 8.42, math said 8.55, um, on the day, 8.42. Little bit lower than what the math said, but still certainly within the ballpark. Um, let's go and have a look at the low position. The low position we should have, um, because the wiper will be right down the bottom of the uh, 5k pot, so that gives us 470 divided by um, the two resistors added together. So 470 divided by 
5470 times the 7.15, 614 millivolts. Let's see if we've got our 614 millivolts. Let's turn that right down. Oh, we do not have 614 millivolts. We have 673 millivolts. Why? Okay, have a look at the inset which is now showing on the video. I've actually stripped the board down, taken the IC out carefully because the IC I didn't want loading down the resistance and I've measured the variable resistor at 4,000 uh, 450 ohms, not 5,000 ohms. See the other inset? I put a magnifying glass there. It's actually labelled as a 5K analog pot. It's way below value. The 470 ohm series resistor, I also did a measurement on that. Instead of 470 ohms, it was 460 ohms. I checked them using two multimeters and they both came up exactly the same. I was quite surprised at the uh, 4450 ohms. So just uh, now, here's the maths based on that. Uh, 4450 then, which is what I measured, add the 460 to give me the uh, R1 plus R2. R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times the reference voltage, 700 millivolts. Uh, on the day, we're reading just a little bit below that. So um, it was quite interesting. The original sums said that uh, based on the maths that we would have had that, but that was based on having 5K and having 470. So always check the value of the components in a circuit, especially an old board like this that was made about 30 years ago. And uh, the, the parts have probably drifted. Maybe that was uh, a very poor tolerance uh, uh, pot in the first place. Um, down at the bottom value, the last bit of the maths here I've got, and I based it on the 614 millivolts. Um, if I went 614 divided by the uh, 390 ohm resistor, multiplied it by the, the 470, add it to the 614 millivolts, 1.35 volts. Let's see what we actually got on the output. Not 1.35, but 1.616. And if you plug the new value in that I had, which was 700 millivolts. So if you were to get the 700 millivolts and divide it by the 390, multiply that current by the 470 and then add 700 millivolts to it, you'll find that you get very close to 1.616 volts. Now, big problem with this type of circuit, the manufacturer says do not take the um, reference voltage down using a voltage divider like this down below two volts because you start getting um, input bias current problem going down through the uh, low resistance and that last variance if you do the maths on that um, the reason is that you don't get the exact voltage is because you have got input bias current problem there um, so ideally um, these things are designed to run from around about two volts manufacturer says they're going to work pretty well from two volts upwards and this is uh, configured now as a 2 to 37 volt positive series regulator. Uh, of course to get 37 volts out I'd need about 40 volts of uh, input voltage and um, at, at 17 volts you can see it again on the inset uh, we certainly don't have that. So that's the 723 regulator uh, set up in a linear fashion this regulator has been used in literally millions and millions of circuits worldwide. Um, I've put on my website quite a few of the circuits that it's been used in over the years and there's many ways that it can be modified and there's one very good um, technique that was used in Elector magazine many years ago showing how you can use another bias voltage powering the bottom of the chip to take you down to zero volts. But somebody else did a video and show that when you do that, you're actually defeating the purpose of the precision zener diode inside the chip and you start to get um, voltage regulation problems by doing it. So by running this like barefoot, as per the manufacturer says, keeping yourself above two volts at pin five, um, you're going to have extremely good regulation with this type of regulator.
This has been Greg Moore for TAFE New South Wales. I hope this helps. Thank you.